Hi guys and welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and in today's post I would like to show you guys how to create a very simple grunge effect with just a few steps. So as you guys can see here's my before and this is my after. Let's also zoom in a little bit closer. If we zoom in we can also see that this grunge effect brings out way more details and gives this whole image a more 3D look and more dynamic contrasty touch to it. And also way way more details again. As you guys can see here's my before again and after before and after so in today's tutorial just with a few steps showing you how to create this very easy grunge effect okay so first of all on here right hand side in my layers palette I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger here we already have our after image which I'm going to drag to the bottom so we don't have that at all okay so basically my original before image here my first layer I'm just going to duplicate that I just imported it straight from camera raw did a few adjustments in camera raw then basically just brought this now into Photoshop and here's my first layer so first step that I'm going to do is take this to the new layer icon down here we're going to make a duplicate of this and I'm just going to write here two quickly so I know okay this is now my second layer and I'm going to work now on the second layer first of all what I'm going to do is command E which basically means I'm just going to invert this complete image then I will go and start adding a new blending option to this which I'm going to do over here and we'll change this to vivid light so now in vivid light we have a complete grayed out image and that is a very good start for adding just a very contrasty grunge look to this okay I'm also going to press right click here and say convert to a smart object because I will apply a filter now and once I apply this filter I can always go back if my layer is a smart object and I can then go ahead and tweak my filter again so let's do that quickly so I converted that now to a smart object as you guys can see also down here the small icon now I will go to the filter section I'm gonna go to blur and I'm gonna look for surface blur okay so surface blur opened and now in surface blur first of all we can also work here with our radius and our threshold normally I start around 50 to 50 and then mask certain areas in and out because under the threshold area as you guys can also see we do have these halos around here so let's first of all play a little bit with our threshold here and take that all the way down so as you guys can see if I take it more down our halos completely vanish and we can actually then just up this a little bit more so I mostly work between 30 to 50 percent here of my threshold then also in radius if I'm going to push the radius all the way up you'll see that this effect gets a little bit more or less our halos get bigger and it softens everything a little bit so if we're going to take the radius down to say 3% you'll see that this sharpens more and also works more finer but I'm more a fan of using it around at 50% which gives me a nice even effect and also I do get a lot of more grunge in my image okay so let's hit OK over here and that will be directly applied now to my image surface blur has rendered and now we have everything here on our second layer still as a smart object and we can now also go back and forth and tweak this still so as you guys can see smart object over here underneath we have our smart filters and surface blur so if I want to go back and I'm still not happy with my adjustments here from the filter I can just double tap here onto surface blur that will take me back into the filter I can tweak my stuff again and say OK and that will directly be overtaken by our second layer over here so it's very handy to work with smart objects you can work quicker with those alright so let's go over to our next step now first of all what I want to do is just change the blending options and keep on working on this on a normal layer gee but if we switch this now to a normal layer this will look like this hmm this is a bit ridiculous so let's switch that back to vivid light and we first of all have to apply a few more techniques first of all I don't really want any color in this image as you guys can see still some oranges here and some reds I actually want to create just a very grayed out image so I'm gonna go to adjustments here here in saturation and I'm gonna take my saturation sliders here let me just make this a bit bigger saturation sliders all the way down so we have no color whatsoever okay so for the next step now I do want to change the blending options but first of all I need a complete new layer 
For that we can press the master shortcut which is command alt shift and E all together and we will merge physically all layers together and create one new layer over here. So we can go ahead now and delete the hue and saturation and our second layer and we will just be left with our last layer here, just our normal gray layer. So now the trick comes in, just take the blending options here and switch that all the way down to just to overlay and we will directly already get a very grungy effect onto our image. So as you guys can see, here's the before and after, before and after. Let's zoom in a little bit closer over here. If this is a bit too strong and you still have halos, we can obviously do masks. So here's a before and after again, before and after. Let's go a little bit down here on his clothes and his coat. So before and after, before and after. Way more detail than we had before. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit again. As I said, obviously this is applied onto your complete image. If you want that effect, you're welcome to do it on your complete image. I actually want to create a hidden mask now. So I'm gonna hold Alt here, select the new layer mask icon down here, and we will physically get a hidden mask. So now I'm just gonna brush this in very roughly onto the person. So I'm gonna choose change my brush over here. Also a white foreground color, yep, say OK. And I'm gonna switch this opacity to around 100%. Gonna press Control all together to make my brush a little bit bigger. And also feather my brush hardness here around 50%. Okay, make my brush a little bit smaller again and on my mask here, on the hidden mask, I'm just going to brush it in now onto his face and everywhere where I actually want this effect to shine through. Okay, so all over here, so I'm not going to do it too precise in this tutorial, rather just a little bit rough here. Okay, all the way through, at the bottom as well. Okay, and a little bit more, and over the sides here, and a little bit more. Okay. And that's basically all where I'm going to apply it to. Let's also quickly switch both of these layers off so we can basically just see how rough we painted actually over here. Okay, a little bit more over here and a little bit on this side. And a little bit more. Okay, and we didn't paint it too much on his hair, just a little bit. And I'm going to switch foreground colors, basically black foreground color now. And I'm just going to brush the sides away a little bit again. So we have a clean cutout. Okay, switch both of those layers on again. And if you want to, you can obviously also always do a selection around your complete person with a pen tool and create a very nice and clean mask over here. I'm gonna press X again quickly with a white foreground color here and also just paint a little bit in his face again. And that's now my basic first step to create just a very simple grunge effect. Okay, next step that I will do is also create another new gray layer here with the new layer icon. I'm going to press Command A to fill my complete image with a selection, as you guys can see over here. I'm going to press M for the marking tool, right click and say fill this complete layer again here with 50% gray. So let's select 50% gray, going to hit OK and we have a new layer here to do our, some dodge and burning. Okay, so on this layer, I'm also going to change the blending options to overlay, so it's a little bit harder. I'm going to press Command D to get out of the selection here. And now on this layer, again, with just black and white foreground color with a normal feathered brush. So let's select our B, the brush again, our opacity here at the top. I'm going to switch that back to 0 0.7 and also my foreground color is black and white. I'm going to put the highlights first, so let's paint with white first and zoom in a little bit closer. First of all, I do also want to change my brush. So again, Control Alt and hardness should be zero, so feather it completely. And I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm also working with a Vacuum Intenius 4 board. So if I have my board, I'm able to change brush sizes really quickly. Otherwise, use the brackets up and down. Bra open bracket and closing bracket. Okay, let's also go into the face now here. And first of all, what I'm gonna do is just paint a little bit onto his highlights everywhere, just a little bit over here on his neck, just a little bit, I'm not overdoing this time, mostly I do it a little bit harder, for, but for this technique just a little bit everywhere on the highlights, a little bit on the eyes, and also now just very roughly onto the coat, everywhere into these small areas here. Okay, and a little bit more, I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger now and do it very roughly over the coat, over here a little bit. 
and just trying to find these edges over here, make it a little bit smaller my brush, going over these edges here, a little bit more, okay, and a bigger strikes over here, a little bit more down. So like I said, obviously before, I'm not going to do it too much today, rather just a little bit on some areas. Okay, a little bit onto the pants here, and going up a little bit again, a little bit on the hair, right, like I did before. Okay, and that's basically all I'm going to do. Switching now back to black, so we obviously have now black foreground color, so we can burn a little bit. And now with the burning tool, I would work a little bit harder and a little bit more again, just burning these edges here again. And everywhere where we have a little bit of shadow, I'm just going to darken these areas a bit. Okay, a little bit more. And over here, and obviously over his beard, I'm also going to burn that quite a lot. Going to make my brush a little bit smaller again, get all these small edges over here. Nice shadows. Also over the beard a little bit more. Okay. And a bit more down here. So it looks very grungy. It's also a little bit too strong if you ask me. But this is now obviously your personal taste, and you can also obviously always change your opacity later. Okay, so let's go down here a little bit more. I'm also going to darken on the arm a little bit more on his hand. Also here in the coats. So with shadows, obviously doing it a little bit more. Okay, and like I said before, I'm not concentrating too much on my background today. It's rather just on the person and getting a little bit of a look onto the person. Okay, so that's basically all I'm going to do for, again, my dodge and burning. Let's just quickly rename this here, dodge and burn. So we know that has to do with dodge and burning. Okay, and next step that I'm going to do again is press Command, Alt, Shift, E. Create a new master shortcut over here and we merge everything together now. And now my last step is just adding a little bit of a look and getting a unique color cast to this. So first of all, I'm going to go back to adjustments. Adjustments, I'm going to switch here to a normal black and white adjustment layer. So over here, I have my normal adjustment layer. And I'm now not going to play or fiddle around too much with all my sliders here in black and white. If you want to tweak certain areas still, so you're welcome to go in here and also play a little bit. Say, for instance, if I just want to select all the reds and make the reds a little bit brighter, I can basically just take the red slider and brighten the reds down here or darken them a little bit more. For my case, I'm just going to keep everything to the standard settings over here. And only step that I'm going to do is change my blending options here again to overlay. So we get a really hard effect on this black and white uh, adjustment layer here. But now I'm still not too happy with the look over here. So I'm also able to take this to a soft light so it's not that strong. And I also can take my opacities down here just to say around 60%. That looks already a little bit better. Let's turn that off and on again so we have more contrast. But I'm still not too happy with the colors. So let's double tap on here. We will be brought into the layer styles. And now obviously with our layer styles we can go into the advanced blending options here. And under channels we can turn off certain channels to get certain color effects. So if I'm going to turn off the reds we will get this more yellowish army look to it. We can also turn off the greens here and we'll get a very greenish effect but I'm not too happy. So the blues as well and we're back to normal. But what if we now turn the red and green on and switch off the blues? Then we get a more bluish vibe to it with also more magentas in our dark sides and I'm pretty happy with this effect. So this is now my overall look that I've chosen here for this image. I'm going to hit OK and we have now applied this new color look just to our normal black and white layer adjustment layer here. I can also obviously then again take down my opacity, tweak this a little bit more, say around 50%. That should give me a nice effect now and I'm pretty happy now with this. Okay, so let's sort our stuff here a little bit. First of all, I'm going to take all of these layers here that we just created, press Command G, and I'm just going to write here, look. So I know that's all about this grunge look over here. So that is again now our before and after, before and after. Let's maybe quickly just take our real after that I had before and have a look. Yes, that was a little bit more on the greenish side than I actually had now. So a little bit more green before than I have it now. Okay, so but basically this is now my quick tutorial showing you guys quick and easy again how to apply this grunge effect with just a few simple steps onto your image. Here's a quick before and after again, before 
and after. Let's go a little bit more down here onto the hand so we can also see a little bit better before and after, way more detail, more contrast, and it still looks very, fairly sharp. So again, before and after, before and after. Like I said also before, this is not necessarily always, you always have to apply this at 100%. You can still take this look folder now and also take it down another 60%, so it's not too intense on your overall image and you're not getting too much of that grungy look. Just more or less a very decent grungy look and you're not overdoing this effect. Okay guys, so that's basically it for this week's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something from these few techniques here. Please do give me a thumbs up if you liked this tutorial. Let me know in the comments down below what you liked or what you didn't like. And also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys and see you all in my next video. Bye bye.